teacher Roby for another video lesson. Now in the previous lesson, we talked about how food is converted into energy through cellular respiration for animals, humans, and plants. This time, we will just focus in plants, specifically about photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis is defined as the food making in plants. But do you know what are the details of this process? Now, if you want to find out, you are in the right video lesson. So please tune in for our discussion. This grade 9 biology video lesson is still about ecosystem life energy. As what I have mentioned earlier, the specific lesson that we are going to discuss is about photosynthesis. What are expected of you to learn in this lesson? Our target objectives for this video lesson are the following. First is to describe the parts of organelles involved in photosynthesis. Second is to describe the process of food making by plants. Now we have here the key questions for this lesson. 1. How do plants manufacture their own food? 2. What are the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis? Let us try this pre-assessment for us to find out how much you know about photosynthesis. Directions, identify what is asked or described in each item. Choose the letter of the correct answer and write it in your activity notebook. Number 1. Plants make their food by absorbing water and carbon dioxide. Which of the following substances is the origin of oxygen released as gas by green plants during photosynthesis? A. Sugar B. Water C. Carbon dioxide D. Ribulus 1, 5 by phosphate. Number 2. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are gases that cycle out in the ecosystem. Which of the following gases is important to photosynthesis? A. Oxygen B. Ozone gas C. Water vapor D. Carbon dioxide Number 3. Plants are considered as food makers. In which of the following cell organelles does photosynthesis occur? A. Chlorophyll B. Chloroplast C. Mitochondrion D. Ribosome Number 4. The light-dependent reaction of photosynthesis must come first before the light-independent reaction because its products are important to the fixation of carbon dioxide. Which of the following is or are the product or products of the light-dependent reaction? A. ADP only B. Not pH only C. Not pH and ADP D. Not pH and ATP Number 5 Plants are very unique among other organisms due to their capability to trap sunlight and make their own food. Which of the following enables plants to trap energy from the sun? A. Chlorophyll B. Chloroplast C. Cuticle D. Epidermis How did you find the pre-assessment? Did you find the quiz difficult? Do not worry, you will learn more along the way, so let us get going! Now, for the unlocking of difficult words that you are going to encounter in this lesson, we have here the word bank. You can pause this video for a while to carefully read the different words. We have here pigment, light dependent, light independent, Carbon dioxide fixation, cyclic photophosphorylation. Non cyclic photophosphorylation, 
photorespiration Zay pathway Photosystem C3 plant C4 plant Cap plant and variegated leaf This time, let us first discuss about photosynthesis Photosynthesis is a process of food making done by plants and other autotrophic organisms. The presence of chlorophyll enables these organisms to make their own food. Autotrophic organisms require light energy, carbon dioxide, and water to make food. In plants, Photosynthesis mainly takes place in the leaves and little or none in stems, depending on the presence of chlorophyll. The typical parts of the leaves include the upper and lower epidermis, mesophyll spongy layer, vascular bundles, and stomata. The upper and lower epidermis protects the leaves and has nothing to do with photosynthetic processes. The mesophyll has the most number of chloroplasts that contain chlorophyll. They are important in trapping light energy from the sun. Vascular bundles, phloem and xylem, serve as transporting vessels of manufactured food and water. Carbon dioxide and oxygen are collected in the spongy layer and enter and exit the leaf through the stomata. The parts of a chloroplast include the outer and inner membranes, intermembrane space, stroma, and thylakoid stacked in grana. The chlorophyll is built into the membrane of the thylakoids. Chlorophyll absorbs white light, but it looks green because white light consists of three primary colors, red, blue and green only red and blue light are absorbed thus making these colors unavailable to be seen by our eyes while the green light is reflected which makes the chlorophyll looks green however it is the energy from red light and blue light which are absorbed and will be used in photosynthesis the green light that we see is not absorbed by the plant and thus cannot be used in photosynthesis. This time, I want you to answer this activity. This is entitled, Plant Structure for Photosynthesis. You are going to draw the picture first and label the parts of a chloroplast and the internal structure of a leaf. Write your answers in your activity notebook. For the next activity, we have here raw materials and end products of photosynthesis. You are going to complete the table below and write the raw materials and products of photosynthesis. Copy first the table in your activity notebook. Congratulations learners for finishing the two activities! This time, I want you to grab your ball pen and your notebook and take note of these important details. Stomata are found on the lower surface of the leaf that allows the entrance of carbon dioxide needed for photosynthesis. They also serve as exit point for the oxygen produced during photosynthesis. We also have here an illustration of how a stomata looks like. There are two stages of photosynthesis, light-dependent reaction and Calvin cycle or dark reaction. Light reactions need light to produce organic energy molecules like ATP and not pH. On the other hand, dark reactions don't need light. Instead, dark reactions use ATP and not pH to produce energy molecules. Let us discuss first light-dependent reaction. 
It occurs in the thylakoid membrane and converts light energy to chemical energy. Water, one of the raw materials of photosynthesis, is utilized during this stage and facilitates the formation of free electrons and oxygen. The energy harvested during this stage is stored in the form of ATP or adenosine triphosphate and not pH or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate hydrogen. These products will be needed in the next stage to complete photosynthetic process. Now, let us discuss the second stage of photosynthesis called Calvin cycle or dark reaction. It is a light independent phase that takes place in the stroma and converts carbon dioxide into sugar. This stage does not directly need light reaction. This is why it occurs immediately after the light dependent phase. The chemical equation for photosynthesis may be summarized as follows. The inputs are carbon dioxide plus water with chlorophyll and sunlight. The outputs will be glucose plus oxygen. And for more concepts about photosynthesis, we have some videos from YouTube. You can grab your ball pen and your notebook to take down some important details about it. You can also copy the links projected on your screen for future reference. In order for plants to grow, they need inputs of carbon dioxide, water, and energy. The chemical process by which plants use these resources to manufacture glucose, the building blocks of plants, is called photosynthesis. In the process, oxygen gas is produced as a byproduct. The energy for photosynthesis originates in the sun and arrives at the earth as sunlight. This light has both a wave and a particle nature. The particles, or photons, are the smallest units of light. Photons oscillate along a path, which is measured as wavelengths. The light emitted from the sun contains photons in a wide spectrum of wavelengths, called the electromagnetic spectrum. Photosynthetic organisms use only a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, called visible light. Photosynthetic organisms contain pigments that facilitate the capture of wavelengths of light in the visible light range. The color of the pigment comes from the wavelengths of light reflected. Plants appear green because they reflect yellow and green wavelengths of light. Red and blue wavelengths of light are absorbed by these pigments and provide the energy that is used for photosynthesis. Within eukaryotic photosynthetic organisms, also known as photoautotrophs, the chemical reactions of photosynthesis occur within plant cells in specialized structures known as chloroplasts. Photosynthesis consists of two sets of reactions, the light-dependent reactions and the Calvin cycle. Within the chloroplast are small disc-like structures called thylakoids which are surrounded by a fluid-filled space called the stroma. The reactions that synthesize glucose, the Calvin cycle, occur in the stroma. The light-dependent reactions occur in the thylakoid. It is here that conversion of light energy to chemical energy is initiated. In most photosynthetic organisms, thylakoids contain pairs of photosystems, called photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, that work in tandem to produce the energy that will later be used in the stroma to manufacture sugars. The photosystems of the thylakoid consist of a network of accessory pigment molecules and chlorophyll, the molecules that absorb the photons of light. Within the pigment molecules, the absorbed light energy excites electrons to a higher state. Photosystems will channel the excitation energy gathered by the pigment molecules to a reaction center chlorophyll molecule, which will then pass the electrons to a series of proteins located on the thylakoid membrane. Photons of light strike photosystems 1 and 2 simultaneously. We will examine what happens with the photons striking photosystem 2 first. 
The energized electrons are passed from the reaction center of photosystem 2 to an electron transport chain. The electrons lost by photosystem 2 are replaced by a process called photolysis, which involves the oxidation of a water molecule producing free electrons and oxygen gas. While this oxygen gas is a byproduct of photosynthesis, it is an important input to the cellular respiration pathways. As electrons pass through the electron transport chain, the energy from the electron is used to pump hydrogen ions from the stroma to the thylakoid, creating a concentration gradient. This gradient powers a protein called ATP synthase, which phosphorylates ADP to form ATP. The low energy electrons leaving photosystem 2 are shuttled to photosystem 1. Within photosystem 1, low energy electrons are re-energized and are passed through an electron transport chain where they are used to reduce the electron carrier NADP plus to NADPH. When the chloroplast is receiving a steady supply of photons, NADPH and ATP molecules are rapidly being provided to the metabolic pathways in the stroma. Therefore, the ATP and NADPH formed during the light-dependent reactions are used in the stroma to fuel the Calvin cycle reactions. The Calvin cycle consists of a series of reactions that reduce carbon dioxide to produce the carbohydrate glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The cycle consists of three steps, the first of which is carbon fixation. In this step, carbon dioxide is attached to ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, resulting in a six-carbon molecule that splits into two three-carbon molecules. The second step is a sequence of reactions using electrons from NADPH and some of the ATP to reduce carbon dioxide. In the final step, ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate is regenerated. For every three turns of the cycle, five molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate are used to reform three molecules of ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. The remaining glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is then used to make glucose, fatty acids, or glycerol. It takes two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to make one molecule of glucose phosphate. Thus, the Calvin cycle has to run six times to produce one molecule of glucose. These molecules can remove their phosphate and add fructose to form sucrose, the molecule plants use to transport carbohydrates throughout their system. Glucose phosphate is also the starting molecule for the synthesis of starch and cellulose. Plants produce sugars to use as storage molecules and structural components for their own benefit. By utilizing the energy of the sun, along with inputs of water and carbon dioxide, plants act as glucose factories. Photosynthetic organisms are the primary producers of glucose on the planet. They also produce oxygen gas as a byproduct and thus serve as the foundation of life, providing food and oxygen for the complex food webs on both land and in the oceans. Photosynthesis takes place in two major phases. They are light reaction, dark reaction. In light reaction, light plays an important role. Here, a series of chemical reactions takes place one after another, initiated by light. Hence, this phase is technically termed as photochemical phase. The reactions of the light take place in thylakoid membrane which is present in chlorophyll. Thylakoids are termed as grana of chloroplasts. Following are the steps involved in light reaction. Step 1. When sunlight falls on the plant, 
the chlorophyll present on the leaf absorbs light energy and becomes activated. The absorbed energy excites electrons to the higher energy level. Step 2. This energy is used to split the water molecule into two component ions. It is given by the equation shown on the screen. The above reaction is termed as photolysis, which means splitting by using light. That is, photo, light, lysis, breaking. Step 3. The highly reactive ions of water split in two different directions as hydroxyl and hydrogen ions. The hydroxyl ions through a series of steps produce water and oxygen. The water produced may be used inside the plant and the gas oxygen is released into the atmosphere. The hydrogen ions undergo a series of changes in dot reaction. Adenosine triphosphate ATP and nicotinamide adenosine dinucleotide hydrogen phosphate NADPH are produced at the end of the light reaction. These are called as assimilatory powers. These ATP and NADPH are used in sugar making process. Let us learn about dark reaction. The term dark reaction does not imply that this reaction occurs only in the dark or during the night. This reaction indicates that it do not require light energy. However, it occurs simultaneously with the light reaction. Hydrogen ions produced in photolysis are instantly picked up by a special compound NADP to form NADPH. During the dark phase reaction, the hydrogen of the NADPH combines with the carbon dioxide with the help of ATP energy in order to produce glucose. This reaction occurs in a number of steps by using some special intermediate compounds, mainly RUBP, ribulose, biphosphate and enzymes. Finally, the obtained glucose is converted into starch. During the process of photosynthesis, several proceedings occur in the chloroplast. Some of them are converting light energy into chemical energy Heating of water molecule, reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. Once light energy has been captured, it can help the dark reactions to initiate several events, even in the dark, and some may continue even in the absence of light. Light dependent events or reactions are called light reactions, and they take place in grana, while the rest are called dark reactions and they occur in the stroma. Plants have the capacity to work under any situations such as from very lighted hot dry conditions to wet, humid dim light conditions. The requirement of light and other factors change from one plant to another. After watching the video clips on photosynthesis, make a concept map of the entire process by filling up the figures with the processes involved, raw materials used, and the end products of the entire process of food making. You can copy the concept map projected on your screen in your activity notebook. This time, let us explore the process of photosynthesis by doing this activity. This is entitled, Where Does Photosynthesis Happen? The materials that you will be needing for this activity are the following. Petri dish, ethyl alcohol, tripod, water bath, iodine solution, 200 ml beaker, wire goose, any variegated leaf, alcohol lump, safety goggles, water, and medicine dropper. 
for the procedure, you are going to do the following. 1. Get a variegated leaf. 2. Draw the leaf and indicate the patches or margins that are not colored green. 3. Place the leaf in a beaker with water and boil the leaf to remove the water-soluble red and blue pigments. 4. Replace the water with ethyl alcohol. Place the beaker in a water bath and apply heat. Be careful because the alcohol is volatile. 5. Pour out the alcohol. Replace it with water and apply heat. 6. Spread out the leaf free of pigments carefully in a petri dish. 7. Cover the leaf with a few drops of iodine solution. 8. Observe. 9. A blue-black or dark purple coloration in the leaf indicates the presence of starch. 10. Draw the leaf. Darken the parts of the leaf you observe to contain starch. 11. Compare the second drawing of the leaf with the first drawing you made. This time, grade 9 learners, I will be performing the activity entitled Where Does Photosynthesis Happen? The materials that we will be needing for this activity are the following. First, we need a variegated leaf. When we say variegated, it means leaf with different colors. Iodine solution, but since we don't have iodine solution, I will be using Covidon iodine or commonly known as betadine, medicine dropper, alcohol, specifically ethyl alcohol, water, and since we don't have petri dish, I'll be using this container later, a match to light the alcohol lamp, tripod, and a wire goose. And we have here a casserole that we will be using later instead of a water bath. We will just going to fill it with hot water. Okay, so come on, let's do the activity. So now, let us do the setup. First is we are going to light the alcohol lump using a match. Once the alcohol lump is lighted, we are going to place it under the tripod. And then we are going to put the wire goose on top and put the beaker with water on top of it. After placing the beaker, we are going to put the variegated leaf and wait for it to boil. Be careful in doing this because of the hot surface. And then what we are going to do is wait for it again to boil. And now that it is boiling, we are going to get the beaker but make use of a pot holder because the surface is hot. And then we are going to drain the water here in the casserole. Once it is done, we are going to replace the water with ethyl alcohol. And then, we are going to place it in the casserole. And we are going to add more hot water, not on the beaker, but on the casserole.
afterwards, we are going to get the beaker. And then, we are going to drain the ethyl alcohol. Next is we are going to replace the ethyl alcohol with water. And then we are going to put this back into the casserole. What we're going to do next is we're going to get the leaf from the beaker and spread it in the container. Then we're going to cover the leaf with a few drops of iodine solution. This time, I want you to observe the leaf. A blue, black, or dark purple coloration in the leaf indicates the presence of starch. So I want you to draw the leaf and darken the parts of the leaf you observe to contain starch. And then, compare it with the first drawing that you made earlier before we started our activity. That's it, grade 9 learners! If you want to try this activity at home, you can make use of some alternative materials and please observe precautionary measures. And as an explanation to the activity, iodine solution is a test for starch. In this activity, the green part of the leaf turned blue-black in the presence of iodine solution. This indicates that starch was present. The green part of the leaf carried out photosynthesis. This observation was not observed in the non-green part of the leaf. Photosynthesis did not happen in the non-green part because there was no starch. Clearly, photosynthesis occurs only in the green parts of the plants such as green leaves and green stems of cactus. Grade 9 learners, I want you to remember that the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis are temperature, carbon dioxide, water, and light. Providing the plant with the right amount of these materials will ensure good quality of the harvest. Congratulations learners, you have finished the discussion. We are now down to the reflection part. And I want you to complete the following sentence prompts. I have learned that. I wish to ask my teacher about. You can write your answers in your activity notebook. And now we are in the last part of our lesson. We are going to have the assessment. For us to find out how much you have learned about photosynthesis. Directions. Identify what is asked or describe in each item. Choose the letter of the correct answer and write it in your activity notebook. Number 1. A farmer is experiencing a problem in growing his crops. Most of the leaves of the crops are turning yellow. Which of the following will likely result from the yellowing of the leaves of the crops? A. It will increase in the production of food. B it will decrease in the production of food c the production of food will remain the same d none of the above number two abby wants to know if leaves are capable of making food during night time which of the following experimental design should abby do to get an accurate answer to her question a Put one potted plant in a very dark place overnight and test for the presence of starch. B. 
Cover the plant with paper bag overnight and test for the presence of starch. C. Put one potted plant under the sun and the other in a shaded area for 2 hours and test for the presence of starch. D. Cover one leaf of a potted plant with carbon paper for 2 hours and test for the presence of starch. Number 3. Which of the following materials are cycled out by the chloroplast and mitochondrion? A. Sugar, water, oxygen, and ATP. B. Sugar, water, sunlight, and oxygen. C. Carbon dioxide, water, sugar, and oxygen. D. Carbon dioxide, water, oxygen, and ATP. Number 4. When cells break down a sugar molecule completely to produce chemical energy or ATP, the cells need blank. A. Sugar only. B. Sugar and water. C. Sugar and oxygen. D. Sugar and carbon dioxide. Number 5. A vegetable farmer wants to increase his harvest. Which of the following conditions should a farmer consider? A. The kind of soil only. B. The location of plots only. C. The amount of water only. D. All of the above. Well done on your new learnings! I hope you have appreciated more the topic about photosynthesis. Congratulations, Grade 9 learners! You have unlocked the learnings on photosynthesis. Congratulations, Grade 9 learners, for finishing the lesson about photosynthesis. I know this time, you will no longer define photosynthesis as just the food making in plants, but you can now also include the different details of its processes. Now, for more lessons about biology, Please do not forget to tune in for more videos.